uh, review of a movie I watched earlier uh, a couple weeks ago, not earlier, uh, called The Breed, uh, which starred Michelle Rodriguez. And the only reason I watched it was because on the on the screenshot or the thumbnail or whatever it is that's on streaming services, mm -hmm. uh, before you like like when you click on when you like uh, zoom over a movie, there's like a whole screen of like the actual movie and like the the, the description and everything. Yeah. The only reason I watched it was because Michelle Rodriguez was in a bikini, and I'm like, I'm sold. I'll be there right now. <laughs> so it came out like 2006, and I just like, instead of trying to be like a mysterious story uh, teller, I just I just tell you about the whole thing off the bat. Uh, spoilers, 2006 movie. Uh, basically, uh, these rich kids, it's two rich brothers, uh, the, the older brother, the younger brother, the younger brother's girlfriend, Michelle Rodriguez, uh, their longtime uh, female friend, and uh, their college friend uh, are all going to spring break or some sort of vacation after for uh, college, mm -hmm. and they're they're all taking a, a plane to the, their uh, the rich guy's uncle's cabin on a private island. And on this island, I don't know if the, the uncle sold some of it to the military, but the army had a military base there where they trained attack dogs. <laughs> Sorry, I just sneeze. But I killed half of the stuff over here. <laughs> I can't put my nose. I only put my to like, uh, I see some people put their fucking shirt over their nose when they sneeze. I'm like, you nasty motherfucker. <laughs> Just not all in the yeah. your shirt. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have a towel or a tissue either. So, uh, no, it was too late now. It's all over the fucking ozone. <laughs> but I punched a hole in reality. <laughs> um, so they, they're training attack dogs and they're also like uh, genetically experimenting on them to make them more intelligent. And so uh, they get there. They're having a, they're a nice little party. The older brother is really good archer. Like, they want to show off that he's a good archer with a bow and arrow. So, yeah, like, I'm amazing. Let me hit this fucking uh, dead shot, like, the uh, the centers every time. And then, eventually, the dogs attack him. And, uh... <laughs> I don't know, how do I explain this fucking movie? <laughs> so it makes sense. So, uh, earlier in the movie, there was a cold open between a, a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend. They're on a boat. And they're just having fun, and they see the island, and they dock there because they want to explore. Uh, the, while the boyfriend's tethering the boat to the the dock, the girlfriend goes out and gets just killed. Like it's one of those like mystery kills where like something attacks them, you don't know what it is. Right. Uh, she dies. Um, the roll credits. The movie starts. And they get there on the plane, and they're having fun, and then the dogs start attacking them, and the boyfriend from earlier is just covered in blood, and he bumps into the guys. Because uh, Michelle Rodriguez and the other girl were swimming uh, by the dock, and uh, the three guys went out to explore. And uh, he's just fucking, like, enough blood that like, he should be dead. And he's like, uh, they don't want you here. Like, who does not want to hear? The dogs. The dogs. <laughs> and uh, it, that, that does a, it's a plot point there because, okay, you had a boat, and you never left. So are the dogs uh, keeping you from leaving? You just said the dogs don't want you there, so they would have right. let you leave. So it, it brought up a plot point to me anyway. Uh, so that the dogs kill the guy. He was basically just fucking filler to give him exposition. Like the dogs, they don't want you here. Then they fucking dogs maul him to death. The dogs started attacking everybody. And uh, so they, they, they try to escape to the boat, but there's too many dogs there. So they go back to the cabin and they're all trying to get inside. And the dogs are fucking swarming the hell out of them. And uh, the older brother, he gets a fucking, because uh, 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 they're all running up the stairs. And Michelle Rodriguez gets her leg captured. By one of the dogs, like grabbed by like the uh, her little not her full like her leg, but like the uh, the pants uh, mm -hmm. uh, sleeve, and uh, so the older brother's like, I got this. He fucking pulls his bow out, he pulls his arrow, and it does the the movie does this fucking one eighty. It, it has the camera on the guy uh, facing us, uh, should, like like he's pointing the arrow at us. It it spins on the, all the way like it doesn't cut. All it spins all the way behind him. So now we're behind him, right, for this like awesome action shot. He shoots the arrow, and it's like, oh, yeah, the dog's, like, uh, ripping at her pants leg. And then the fucking arrow misses. It goes to where <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez's leg. I'm like, wow, you're a fucking phenomenal shot. <laughs> and here's the weird part that uh, sometimes you don't realize what it looks like in a movie, but it, what you can, it, the way you interpret things or the way they try to portray something, it makes it seem like because the guy shoots the, the, the arrow it hits Michelle Rodriguez. He put it's a, he's in slow motion. He, he like he puts the boat the, the boat down. 
He looks the dog dead in the eyes. The dog looks back at him like they're fucking bitter rivals. And they're going to have a fucking showdown later in the movie. That's 100% what it looks like. Like, it, like if they could talk, be like, uh, the dog's like, you missed. And the guy's like, yeah, I won't, I won't next time. That's that's that, that's how they portrayed it, which I, I'm pretty sure they were not planning that this dog was the fucking alpha leader of the fucking pack. And he's like, you missed, human. It's like, next time I won't, dog. And by the way, he never has a fucking reaction of him shooting Michelle Rodriguez. Like, he just has this badass stare like, yeah, I did that shit. And that during that scene, right? Yeah. During that little sequence, they get back to the uh, the cabin. Michelle Rodriguez is all fucked up. Uh, her boyfriend's a vet, so he's not even a doctor, doctor. And he's like, I gotta, I gotta take this arrow out. So she, he tries to patch her up. Uh, I don't even remember if the boyfriend, the the brother, because the brother used to date Michelle Rodriguez, and then I guess uh, the younger brother snatched her away. So they're uh, they they never fully get it's into it. Yeah. They didn't know they never like get into it about it. Like it's never like a uh, like a contention point. It's like they like they have a little argument him and the brother one time. And that's it. Like it's not like you stole her from me or like you know yeah blah blah blah. And uh, so they're all fucked up, or well, she's fucked up. Uh, the brother's like, damn, I shot you, my bad. <laughs> Next time I will miss that dog though. Uh, so they they fix her up, and they're all freaking out because they can't escape. And uh, then the black guy, there's a, like that's the, that's the older the older friend. Just I just called the black guy, not to be racist, but he's like it's uh two uh, the older brothers are white. Uh, the, the their their old school friend is white. The girl and then Michelle Rodriguez is Hispanic, and then he's the black guy, I guess, for diversity. And so uh uh. He has he does this moment where they're all panicking, right? Where he tries to bring them together. He tries to give them the speech, right? And it reminded me of the scene from De uh, uh, Deep Blue Sea. If everyone remembers the scene, Samuel L. Jackson, you, you know the scene? Yeah. And I'm like, like is this man about to get fucking devoured <laughs> by some dogs? And no shit, when I thought that this dog bust through the window with a surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> but it doesn't kill him. They end up killing the dog. Yeah. But it, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> You see the coming? Yeah, there's a bronze bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so they kill the dog. Uh, they start boarding up the whole place. And they're like, well, now we're screwed because we're trapped here. And these dogs are, like, actually really smart because earlier when they tried to escape, they tried to get to uh, a little bit later. I don't know if it was after this or before this, but at, at one point, they're like, well, the boat's still out there, so we'll be fine. And then, like, the minute they cut to the boat, the boat's drifting away. The, not the boat, but the ship, the, the plane, because they came out on one of those seaplanes. Right. So the, they're like, the well, at least the plane's still out there, so we're good. We'll just wait till the dogs leave. They look out the window, the fucking plane's floating away down the river. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and they're like, oh, fuck. So they try to go get it, because there's no dogs in the vicinity. And uh, I'm starting to think that the dogs were trying to lure in the one that can fly the plane, so they could kill that one first, so then they had no real escape. Yeah. Because the, the older brother is the pilot. He he dives in, goes after the plane, and when he gets close to the plane, these two fucking dogs up on the wing pop out like, surprise, motherfucker, we laid a trap on you. And they fucking dive into the water. And this is the scariest shit because, like, dogs diving in the water. Like, you know, like, dogs are fast. Yeah. So they dive in the water. And, like, I get this motherfucker. And they're like, oh, my God. The brother fucking hauls ass back to the, the, the shore. So it was a pretty ingenious plan. They waited on the dock. They cut the, the rope to tether the, bo the ship to the, the dock. And they hid behind the wing until he popped out. They just fucking guess, guess what? Guess what? These two big ass fucking German shepherds. And uh, so early in the movie, their their female friend, Michelle's friend, mm -hmm. uh, the, the platonic friend, I guess, she gets bitten by one of the dogs, and she starts having like dog powers. Yeah, yeah it's the weirdest thing. Like she can like I can sense what they're thinking now, and I'm like, what? Like she can start like they they like, they attack her right, mm -hmm. and it's almost like. Then she starts genetically uh, identifying with them, like it, like the dogs are like starting to acknowledge her as part of the pack or something at one point, because she sacrifices herself for the, the whole group, right? Yeah. She's like I'm holding this dog in place with my telekinetic powers is what it seemed like to me, because they heard the dog were having to stare off, and when she broke contact, like eye contact with the dog, the dog mauled her to death, and I'm like, what? What? <laughs> so so these dogs bite you, and now you gain a bit of their. That's what I'm thinking, like, you gain what? What do you, yeah. what? Do you become a fucking werewolf? Because the two brothers get bitten, too, and they start having the same thing with the dogs. Like, this mental link, where, like, the dogs are like, are these becoming our allies? And and the humans are like, I'm starting to feel like a dog. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? 
So the movie ends with them, the uh, the two brothers and then Michelle Rodriguez are the only survivors, and they realize that they find that there's a boat. It's the boat from earlier. It's still tethered to the dock at the other side of the island. So after they go to the military base and they they try to use a radar that didn't work, they they, they just dip, go to the boat, uh, roll credits, and the, the movie decides to have one of those endings where uh, you they open this part of this cabinet in the, in the boat and this fucking dog pops out and then it fades to black. I'm like, well... Kind of like they do with Michael Myers all the time. Yeah. Where he just fucking pops out of nowhere. <clears throat> Hoping that they can make a sequel. Yeah. Uh, but no. That movie was random as hell. The, the, the angle of them getting bitten by dogs and then gaining their genetic like yeah. uh, likeness or like like they or like they bit them so they the dogs imprinted onto them. So now right. they, they, they thought they were part of the pack. I'm like, I'm like, I could never explain what the fuck they were talking about. Right. It was so weird. Michelle, even Michelle really was like, Michelle's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? <laughs> They're like not, she was, she was the the audience voice of like what the fuck are you talking about? That's what they should have done. Plus, it also showed me that if if you're not careful with how you portray something on film, yeah, they're gonna think that that's what you were trying to do. So him him having that face off with the dog made it seem like him and that dog were gonna be the ones. They were gonna fight on the rooftop of fucking uh, Gotham Plaza <laughs> in their fucking bat suit. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys just made you made them seem like rivals. Yeah. And toward the end of the movie, and that that was just a random dog. And that dog, like, they probably killed that dog earlier or later in the movie. They're not even noticing. Yeah. And that dog, like, like if they wanted to distinguish a dog, they could have had, like, a scar over its eye or, like, one eye closed, right? Or make it, like, the actual pack leader, like, the really mischievous dog that keeps fucking with them that won't die. Or you could always have it, like, like even when you first meet it, it has a unique first slight design to yeah, it like or something. something. like that lets you know, like, every time you try to kill this dog, it's the one that survives. Yeah. Like, like it, it would have, and then him, him and the brother, him and the older brother have a showdown, like, on the boat or something. Like, you know, like the younger brother goes with Michelle. They go to one side of the boat to, to rest. The older brother's like, all right, I'm going to look around real quick. Or like they go up to like the the, the little steering wheel and they're, they're, you know, him and her are chilling, right? Yeah. So the older brother goes down and like the dog comes out. Good. I, I found you, bro. <laughs> He's got the bow again. Like the, like the no, the dog's got the bow now. I got to look, 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 look how the table's are turned. <laughs> he got the bow and arrow. He's <laughs> got a little crossbow on his back. <laughs> How the tables are turned. They have like some battle at the under, like at the bottom, like in the, uh, like the, um, I guess it's like not underwater, but like the lower levels of the boat. The below deck. You know, that, that Michelle and the old little brother, the younger brother can't hear. He comes out like, uh, and they, they hear at the end, like, what happened? Like, I finished it. Like, I stabs a knife in the table. <laughs> I'm like, what the? The fuck? boat just starts sinking. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he killed the dog, right? And the dog's like, hey, guess what? I got C4 on my chest. He blows it. Fuck. That would be priceless. There's also a weird scene that made no fucking sense. Uh, the black guy, because it's late at night, and they, they can't escape, so the, the whole house is boarded up, but they need to rest. He's drinking because he's got nothing else to do. He goes downstairs to the uh, the basement, and there's this fucking little puppet show, like stage, in the basement, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a, a black puppet, and it's got a noose around its neck, and it's hanging on the stage, and I'm like... <laughs> Where this are the from? dogs racist? <laughs> That's what I kept thinking. Like, who hung this up there? It never explained it. It's like, is the uncle a racist old man? Because like, it's just a, it's like a, like the most stereotypical racist portrayal of a black person. Like, right. big lips, like the, the the puppet, right? And it's just hanging from a noose. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I fucking went back right to relook at it. Like, is this what I'm actually seeing? Like, yes, it's a fucking black puppet hanging from a noose. And I'm like. What? And then the dog kills the guy. So I guess the dog would did like, I got you now. It's like, this is what's going to happen to you. I was like, I could, I didn't understand the scene at all. Yeah. Like, oh, the dog's fucking using psychological warfare. That's probably what it would be. Yeah. I'm like, how, I'm like, it was so random. That is very random though. It makes me want to make sure that I, uh, the scripts that I write uh, are logically sound. That's what overthinkers are probably really good at writing. Yeah. Also really bad at writing because they never fucking, you know, they're, write. There's always another angle to fix. Right. But uh, it was just a weird, like, the news, the whole dog thing imprinting from get attacked by him. Yeah. Uh, it's, But it was a fun movie to watch while it was, it's one of those, like, you, you watch it once and like, well, it's time to move on. It wasn't like a fucking groundbreaking groundbreaking masterpiece. You wouldn't watch it three more times? For Michelle Rodriguez, I watch it four more times. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> yeah, him and this dog have a showdown. They just got that death stare towards each other. The, the sequels, like the dog had the, the dog's kids, and then his kids show back. Like, 
Like the puppies, family, you know? a family rivalry. The fourth generation puppies <laughs> to his one kid. Yeah, basically. It's like, Dad, why are we coming back to this? Uh, like he bring, he comes back with his kid. Like we're we're going back to the island. We gotta finish it <laughs> because he he's got a psychic link with the dog. So like, I haven't forgotten about you. He's still alive. It is a weird. Like it was weird because like that's what they were moving. That's what it made it look like that him and this one dog were gonna have it out. I was like, you gotta be careful with your, you know. A portrayal of what you put on screen because and that's what it looked like a hundred percent like him and this one dog this one particular dog because if you would have hit it and that's killed. different and the dog's like oh shit i'm hit but because yeah it was like it was a slow motion to him and, and then it cuts to him right looking badass cuts back to the dog be like fuck you bro <laughs> and then it cuts back to him like it looks like they're gonna have a fucking feud for the rest of the movie him and this particular dog and then the dog just and then runs the off dog, the dog just fucking disappears into the rest of the herd that you, or like the pack that you never see again because, like you said, there's no distinguishing feature to know if it's They're all the same one, maybe. Random dogs. No, it's just the same one that pops out at the very end. <laughs> That's it. That could be funny, yeah. Uh, but other than that, it was an okay movie. Decent, decent. Uh, next week, uh, I got to go back to uh, The Wise Kid You Know, season five. <laughs> <laughs> I can't forget about that. Season, season three. three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Season three. Okay, so you jumped real fast. <laughs> like, oh, one, shit. Episode one through five next week. I was gonna say, did you did you go back and do some episodes I didn't know about? I was like, damn. <laughs> also, I gotta talk about Bucky Larson, born to be a star, written by Adam Sandler. Oh, <laughs> uh, Adam Sandler, Nick uh, Nick Swarson. Uh, it's about this guy that uh, named uh, Bucky Larson who finds out his parents used to be porn stars, so he goes to Hollywood to be a porn star. Oh, and it it, it does the reverse of like you know like in a regular movie. The person goes to do an acting, mm-hmm. to, to go to acting in Hollywood, and they get they, they see an audition, and it turns out to be a porn audition. He sees an audition, and it turns out to be a regular mac and cheese commercial. So he's thinking, like, you know, like he's coming into a porn scene. Yeah. Like, they did the reverse of what it would be. Like, you, you go into the, you think you're doing an actual acting scene, and it's like, you know, all right, whip your dick out. You're like, what? Whip my dick out? For them, it for was, him, he's expecting that. Yeah, for them, it was like, all right, so it's what you got. Like, okay, fuck it, pulls his dick out, starts fucking jerking. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Oh, which reminds me, did you ever go see uh, Long Legs? No, my cousin fucking flaked on me. Did he? Yeah. Wasn't he the one that wanted you to go? Yeah, well, he wanted to go see Deadpool, but we uh, already seen that day, and I was yeah. dead asleep. Uh, uh, if you've listened to the last podcast, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was out. I was fucking gone. Talking about random shit. Yeah, really weird stuff. Been questioning yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, that, that scene with Wolverine where he fucking just cuts the, uh, Deadpool down like... There's no fucking action within that specific scene. But it's like, uh, I've been watching stuff on TikTok saying, like, if you put Hugh Jackman in a car, he'll act his heart out. Or he'll, he'll act like the rents do. <laughs> you, you keep putting him in a car. Because uh, they're referencing the prisoners. Yeah. Where, like, in the movie, he his daughter gets kidnapped and then they never find her uh, until the very end of the movie, mm-hmm. I think. And uh, uh, he's fucking yelling at Jake Gyllenhaal in a car. If you're not found, my fucking daughter. And so it's, it's it's also in a car. So the, the trope being that you put Hugh Jackman in a car, he'll act his heart out. Yeah. Well, on top of that, uh, I think it was a movie that he actually liked doing. Because uh, if I remember right, during one of the interviews he was talking about, how it was one of the funnest movies that he's done. Yeah. I mean, which, how could it not be? Should, but, yeah, it'd probably be fun to do a... Uh, like, you're not taking the X-Men side too seriously, like you would in the actual X-Men movie. I know the director of uh, Logan wasn't too happy. He wasn't with how they did uh, the 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 dead body. Oh, but he, I can't really blame him for that. <laughs> but they make sure to say no. It has no effect on that timeline. It really doesn't. I mean, he's dead. Yeah, he's just a skeleton, and it's a good weapon. I wonder. Come to think of it, I wonder how he took apart the skeleton. You didn't watch him do it. Well, yeah, but like it's adamantium. Yeah. How do you break? You it? break the joints. The joints aren't adamantium. Aren't they? Like, it's still all adamantium bone. No, bone, yeah, but like the cartilage in between. You're just peeling the bones away from the... Is that what holds it together, cartilage? Yeah. Mm. Cartilage, ligaments, and stuff like that. That's why whenever he brought those claws out, it had the, like, sinew still on yeah. that. Like, it wasn't like uh, the, the Wolverine skeleton was completely decomposed. Like, there was still a little bit of, like, tissue on the face and stuff when he got hit. That was pretty bad. So Like, oh, man. So there was still, like, things that he could use to... So he didn't keep the fucking skull and, like, the spine as a weapon. That's a, a powerful, like, little mallet. Yeah. An unbreakable mallet, no less. And then he shoved the claws into the one dude's ass. Man, he fucked up everybody. 
Uh, that was a good movie, though. Yeah. It's already made uh, $600 million. Man, it's making this money. See, it just shows that superhero movies are not dead as long as you <laughs> you have fun with them instead of, you know. Well, you tell a good story. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's all good storytelling. Which uh, reminds me, uh, the Robert Downey Jr. is Doom. What do you think? So I guess we're moving on. <laughs> I don't know what to think. What am I supposed to think? Like, it's like it's Robert Downey Jr. Now he's a bad guy. Yeah. I hate you, 3,000. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I, okay, like, deep down, right, being the person that I am, I'm like, all right, so what's the real play? Right. What are you really doing? Like, are you, is he going to be like the big bad for one episode where he's like a variant of Tony Stark? Right. Or is he, because like, I keep hearing r rumors that he's, he's actually Dr. Doom. Yes. In a different world. I keep hearing stories that, uh. There's an actual Elseworld, basically, or like the equivalent of an Elseworld from DC with the Marvel where Tony Stark is Dr. Doom. Right. And like, uh, no, like that he's actually like not, no, that RD, RDJ isn't Do Tony Stark at all, but he's actually Dr. Doom. Like he's actually Victor Von Doom. And that him and Reed, because of their experiments in time and space and like technology, they both get pulled into the the regular MCU. Uh, Reed gets pulled into the MCU uh, at our current time that it is now. Yeah. He gets pulled into it ten years before, and he has to hide away, hide from the other superheroes throughout the uh, and he and he got snapped too. Uh, so he's like he's been hiding in secret this whole time. Yeah, Victor Von Doom is the the one of the storylines I heard, and I'm like. And then he like he he somehow those other ones are saying that he he ends up absorbing story uh story Loki, mm -hmm. so he he gains his powers of reality bending I guess or he controls the entire fucking existence if if that's what Loki is, and the other stories are saying that uh what else uh, that's I guess that's the only two that I know of. Well, the one that I've seen is that in the comic books there was an uh an else world like thing with Tony Stark where it was like one of the other multiverses where uh, instead of Victor Von Doom, I remember, uh, you know, with Reed in the college, they see he swapped minds with Tony Stark during that time oh. and became Dr. Doom instead of Iron Man. I remember what the rest of the thing. Well, so if I were along the same timeline uh, that I was just saying them about him being like 10 years earlier, mm -hmm. he conquers all of reality. He destroys everything and makes the one perfect Doom world, like Doom timeline. Yeah. And only the heroes that were in this little pocket, uh, like, uh, to, like we call it like a little spaceship, they survive. And everyone else, uh, and then they, they, they started resistance because they end up going back to the, the current time that's now Doom controlled. And he has like this whole like fucking secret wars type thing where it's like, like a, a war worlds type thing. Well, they all fight for him, like, uh, who was, one of them was his second in command, like someone, real, like Doctor Strange was his second in command, and so now these disparate heroes that own, that are the only ones that remember the original timeline that they lived in, yeah. or their timeline, they now have to uh, save the world, or save all of reality. Yeah. And that's supposed, because that's supposed to be, what is it, what's the, what's the one that's called, Doomsday, or just Doom? Uh, Doom. Do and then that's what's called secret uh, secret wars or something. Secret wars, yeah. That's gonna be that one following that one. So that, so it's gonna be Doom conquering. So it's basically like and Empire Strikes Back. He wins. Secret Wars. They fight again, and he loses. So they just completely did away with Kang, a hundred percent. Yeah, they completely got rid of Kang. Like dang, the Kang Dynasty is gone. Didn't even have one apparently. <laughs> Oh, uh, also, I remember you asked, I don't, I don't know if you were out of it at the time, whenever we were talking about this part of Deadpool, but you were saying you didn't know the timeline of, like, when they're supposed to be, like, what year or anything like that? Uh, 2018? 2024. 2024? Yeah. So it was just basically right after? Because it was, uh, 2018 is whenever he put himself back to the main timeline, the mm -hmm. sacred timeline, to try to join the Avengers, and then it said six years later. Oh, okay, okay. So we're back at current time. Okay. Uh, yeah, because the Wolverine Logan died in 2029, right? Mm -hmm. But I wonder what happened to Deadpool and them during that timeline. I don't know. Because like, if it's still his timeline, but in the future, did he also die from the corn syrup? Probably. Corn I mean, look came... at the stuff that he does to himself. He has a fucking cancer. Well, he's indestructible, so without the healing factor, he'd probably be like, oh, we got cancer again. Or just completely die. Yeah. 
And you couldn't even keep a relationship with a stripper. <laughs> he fucking, I was like, man, I, I've rewatched that particular fucking monologue like 50 times. It's a good monologue, though. Motherfucker, I, I wish I could say you die alone, but it's God's, we're going to God's greatest jokes and you can't die, except it's on all of us. Well, you got nothing to say, mouth? I know, not even like the Merc with the mouth, yeah. mouth. <laughs> oh man, that was beautiful. <laughs> I probably this is gonna be my fucking like uh my acting class. Like uh, no I get up there. <laughs> <laughs> Just do the whole scene. I got a full Wolverine suit with the mud chops, like like uh actual so accurate height. I cracked my dad up too. Whenever he hopped off of the bar stool. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> Pretty sure he's shorter than five foot three, though. He no, like no, he, he four he, two. No, he was about five three in that. I'm tall. I'm five three. I have no goddamn. He was I... sitting at like one of those bars with the bar stools there, like where they sit up a, a good amount. So if you were to jump off, it'd be hopping down too. If I were to jump off, I'd have to be coming out the step of my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Just trip over yourself. <laughs> uh, and then there's one. Hey, you know what? I, which one I forgot about was the one that was on the uh, that was uh, fucking hanging from the. And the X. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the fucking pile of skulls. I uh, what timeline is that from, though? I can't remember. <laughs> there was a uh, X-Men book. I fucking left him there. Like, well, uh, uh, it ain't you. We have other options. <laughs> I got <laughs> rain in. And then they're saying that uh, Henry Cavill probably is going to play Wolverine since he cameoed on it. He is the only one that's played another Wolverine. Yeah. And then the whole run. Yeah. I can see it, though. Only with those... Thick ass mutton child. They, they, they got to like. Oh. They got to like. I think they did that on purpose just to make it more feral looking. But they're gonna have to like trim them up a little bit. I, I think he did that arm thing. He did his little arm the shotguns. <laughs> Only it was the claws coming out with each of those. What if that's gonna be his signature move? Where the uh, the Hugh Jackman one where he gets down real low. Yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> it would I, I guess it would make sense to make uh, Henry Cavill like a, a body type. They're like really similar. They really are. They like they look like fucking brothers. If you like, uh, put them close together, and you, you took away uh, Hugh Jackman's tan. His Aussie tan. Yeah, he's like been getting a tan lately. Yeah, he used to be pale as hell. <laughs> if if you look at him from the original X Men, mm -hmm. where he had no muscle mass at all, he was just like a hairy chest, and that's it. Yeah. To to him, like in freaking, uh, uh, what's the best one? Probably X Men Legend, uh, X Men Origins. Mm -hmm. He had like the thickest uh, fucking abs. A like, man, <laughs> you come a long way from Wolverine. And then the fourth wall breaks were great, though. Where he's like, yeah, he's kind of, you know, lost a little bit, you know, with the divorce. <laughs> and then, is that what you think I do? It's my bitch, is that what you think I do? This <laughs> fourth wall breaks, it's like. The, I think the best one for me was the, when he fucking looked over the donut shit. The donut car? They're practically hospitals. Oh, the hot dog, the hot dog stand. I thought it was a donut stand. No, it was a hot dog stand. And he's like, they're practically hospitals. <laughs> and it's like, what? Because that's what, like, in my head, like, what the fuck are you talking about? And they just holds him up and carries him. And they stopped halfway through. It's like, I'm tired. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> he was never going to make it. <laughs> you think his shit would be dead, it would be a bulletproof at least. His shinier fucking suit. Yeah. Because he had more like a, like more of a uh, armored looking suit than mm -hmm. Deadpool's leather. It yeah. didn't, didn't fucking matter. You're going to make it. I'm going to let you. Or I just drove him to it out of his face. God. Also, he could get dog pool. Yeah. But he was, I, I knew he was going to kill him when he said, like, uh, he, he asked him for those 50 cows mm -hmm. to go over my dead body. And Deadpool does this, like, little turn in his face. Yeah. Like, he's already trying to figure out a murder. How to get him. Yeah, like, I like I saw, like, the sudden turn. Like, he's <laughs> thinking, like, his fucking brain. I can could, I could see the gears turning. It's hilarious. <laughs> just, like, the subtle facial uh, movements and, like, uh, the eye twitching. Like, you can just, like, actors are amazing. Yeah. Like I said before, Ryan Reynolds said this is perfect role. Perfect role. Hugh Jackman is a really good Wolverine, you know? So. The only Wolverine so far. Yeah. I mean, he played it very well. I would retire. No. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Wrong bike. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I rise with it. <laughs> As if resentable out. 
<laughs> That's it for Center My Lounge. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> hey, bub. Did you ever say bub, hey, bub? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did. At least, oh, pulling out all the cards, huh? What are you looking at, bub? <laughs> I'm about to make up a name of my. I can't do a Cajun accent. I'm about to make, about to make a name for myself. Oh, the gambit was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to make a, make a well, name or whatever. They, they said they forgot about us, our world. It's like some that of our worlds never knew. It. They didn't even know me. I love I love the little fourth wall breaks without being a fourth wall break. Yeah, it's like a meta joke. Yeah, and then uh, you had Blade, one and only Blade. There would never be another Blade. And then you got like the other guy trying to make a Blade movie. Yeah, they kicked well, it up the ground. You had, well, you had Deadpool look at the camera like, mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, there will never be another Blade movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Like he finished his uh, his legacy. Yeah, he had three movies. Yeah, he did. So it, it made it seem like he was like, I, I'm not done yet. Mm-hmm. Electra only had one or one and a half. Oh, that was funny though. It's like your dad or Daredevil's dead. It's like that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a complete. Oh, that's okay. We're good with that. Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've already seen it again. So I like to read the scripts of these movies, mm-hmm. but you can get a hold of them. I probably could. I mean, I know they're like online, right? But I'm so fucking, uh, I'm like a fucking caveman. <laughs> like if I just started printing movies out, I have like a thousand of them yeah. to study. <laughs> but I just buy them on Amazon. Yeah. yeah it takes good. a little longer to get here, but uh, I read them eventually. 